What's up everyone? Welcome to the Coral Reef Talk. I'm Joey Jones. My name is Chris Ternier from Worldwide Coral. Since 2006, you know, started off in a, in a basement, went into a garage, and it's grown from this single building, encompassing the second building over here. It's just grown bigger and bigger every year. Growth and growth is you know, continuous. And it's great. It's one reason why I'm here. Awesome. And you guys propagate your own coral birds? Absolutely. That makes up the majority of what we sell. Probably 95% of what we sell is at Worldwide Corals. But or you guys you specialize in the more high-end coral tree? We, I mean, a lot of folks probably say that yes, we probably do more high-end, but we really have a, we have a good mixture of pretty much anything that, that anybody would need for uh, an advanced tank all the way down to the beginning of the tank. Uh, you just need to come in and either call us on for, for online purchases or even here in the store, just come and ask any of our uh, great employees here, they can help you out with, with beginner uh, tanks. Speaking of beginners, people that are just starting in the hobby, um, they see tanks like this, beautiful display tanks, and they may get scared or they may feel overwhelmed with some advice first and just start down with this tank. Well, this is like the apex of what, I mean, when you look at a tank like this or even our tank over here, the 293, um, these are basically apexes. This is where you would like to reach. However, you have to start anywhere with any kind of hobby. Um, and I usually, what I really like to recommend is something like around a 50 to 60 gallon. Some folks are like to you know start off with a nano tank. Problem with the nano tanks is they are they have too much fluctuation, daily fluctuation. It's Fifty or sixty gallon, and you get a little bit more. You can still do a lot with it, but your fluctuations are quite so high. A little more stable. Uh, yes, a lot yeah. more stable. Um, and if you if you do if you don't skim and don't put in the cheapest equipment, then you don't put in the cheapest light. If you go somewhere in the middle or you know a little bit higher in the middle, you spend the money to get something that's that's you know it's a nice light fixture. You get a good amount of flow. You get a decent skimmer on there. You can you'd be amazed at what you can do. So looking at this tank right here, um, what do we got going on here? How big is this? Tank? This is a 500 gallon tank, or what we call the 500 gallon tank, um, and it's mainly illuminated by T5s. Uh, it's got several strips of LEDs. It used to have halides on it, but we kind of switched it around to see. The good thing about how we do our systems is that we, we basically like to have T5s and LEDs and halides over a lot of the higher end, high lights corals, um, just so we can provide a coral that will adapt to most systems. Uh, if you strictly do LED or you strictly do halide, um, then you got corals that have to go through an adjustment period. So by providing the whole range of, of, of lighting that's available to most aquarists these days, we can get a coral that, um, that adapts much quicker, uh, which is really cool. So we also have um, you know several different um, uh, pumps on the system. Yep, Ecotech Marines. A couple. There's a Max Spec Gyre on there. Calcium reactor. And hurricane skimmer. So take all and that's pretty much it. We really like to keep it we like to keep it simple. We don't like to do a whole lot of complicated stuff. Uh, we are in the belief that the more simplistic the easier it is uh, to keep a system in the long run. The more mechanical or um, you know, apex or any of the other um, systems that you've got on, on a reef that that you rely on, just like a car with too many uh, you know, automatic things on there, the system can uh, break down and you're not, you're not aware of it. The main things we watch are salinity, uh, alkalinity, uh, nitrates, nitrites, phosphates, um, calcium and magnesium. Those are the main things that we look for on a, you know, on a daily, on a daily basis for several times a week at least uh, to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And those are very important for especially beginners to kind of get that water chemistry under control. That's right. And they know what's going on. Well, that's what's so fascinating about having a reef tank in general is that you've got to be a chemist. You gotta be a plumber. You gotta be a scientist. Right? You gotta be a nature lover. So you got all these things that you have to encompass into your uh, into your daily routines, which is really cool. Yeah. 
Now I just had to take the time here to show you guys their 293 display tank with a white tang. Yes, a white yellow tang. His name is Casper and they've had him for over six years. There's only about two or three of these guys in the US and Worldwide Coral has one right here in their display tank. There's also two famous or important corals in this tank. One is the WWC Bounce, which is a mushroom coral, and also the grafted monopora, green and red, you see right here. Worldwide Coral propagates their own coral right there at the shop, and Chris took me behind the scenes to check it out. So here we are in the back of Worldwide Corals. Chris, tell us what we're looking at. All right, this is our farm. This is what makes this whole thing happen. And it's becoming more and more of a part of Worldwide Corals. Uh, we've got, you know, basically four rows, four raceways here that have different varieties of corals in each of them. Uh, on 100 here, we got mainly zoanthus, uh, a lot of zoos. I mean, 200, we had acropora. And then in three and four hundred, it's a lot of different LPS. And you can see by the lighting that we've got on each of these systems. A lot of T5 lighting. A lot of T5. There's some halides in here. Uh, and here, a lot of obviously T5s and some LED strips. Over right here, you can basically see more just T5s and LEDs, but mainly the blue spectrum. Very cool. That is in the back. You're just seeing the back side of it, honestly. But it is our 900 gallon, which will be basically feed everything that we have. Everything is pretty much in the farm right now that we're growing out of the farm has been planted into our 900 gallon left. So if you can imagine, you come back and say, you know, a year, what this will have, what this will look like. It's going to be grown out. Something else, yeah. It'll be spectacular. You can see all the fish doing all their job. At least 200 varieties of aquapora in here. That is one of our mainstays. Is our is our aquapora. It's really what we're known for, um, especially for this past you know uh, basically year. We've been really focusing on that aquapora, and uh, as it's it, it never gets old. Aquapora never get old with all the different color variations. And, and it is you know. It is more of a advanced coral in some cases, but now with all the advancements that you have in the technology and, and the equipment, it's it's become a lot easier. As long as you keep, you know, those things that we talked about, stability, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, you keep, and obviously nitrates and phosphates, and, um, all those in check, that report is really easy. They don't require a whole lot of extra feeding like some of the LPS corals do, um, and they, as long as you keep them and you've got a clean coral um, that has been farmed, especially it's not coming straight from the wild, which can be a bit more difficult to uh, to keep, uh, you can get a coral that does, that does really well. Um, I, I personally have always love them. Is that your favorite coral? What's your absolute favorite? My absolute, I don't. I don't specifically have a favorite coral. I love a lot of different corals. I've always been one to been I've always been one to gravitate toward the more rare corals. Uh, but anything with some crazy bright coral uh, colors um, is, is something that I'm into. I'm also an artist, and I've you know been doing this for 20 some years, and I just I just dig it. It's something that I, I just I just love. So. I guess it depends on the day, what was my favorite cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for um, letting us tag along and checking out the back and checking out your store. Um, if you guys are in the Orlando area and you're looking for great corals, come check out Worldwide Corals. All right, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Thank you so much for checking out this video guys. Special thanks to Chris and everyone at Worldwide Corals for letting us film this video. And please like and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk.